I really wanted to take you all for a ride today and just kind of hang out and chit chat a little bit. As you can see over there, I did get my uh, Rebel 1100. I actually went manual instead of DCT. We'll talk about that in another video. Lots of content coming on that, but I sold the Royal Linfield Himalayan. If you watched that in the other uh, video, that was a sad day. But anyways, today it's just one of those gloomy days. It's like not raining, but it's like that misty wet. Ah, oh, it's just disgusting. It's a little cold and everything, you know? So I figured this is a perfect opportunity for me to finally make that video about all the mods on my Africa Twin. 2022 Adventure Sport ES whatever uh, DCT. Now while we're talking about all the mods on my bike right here, I really don't remember many of the prices of these. I'll try my best, but I will have the links for every single product you're looking at right here, even some other products I'll talk about. I'll leave them right down in the description. So if you're curious about them or you wanna know the price, just click on them right down there in the description. My gosh, I have so many mods, I do not know where to start. You know, let's go and start ones that I noticed being real impactful on this bike. And that has to be with the windshield. Now, I just recently got this Givi one and I have the Puig wind blockers over here. If you notice the standard one, it kind of goes up and then cuts out. You know what, hold on, let's swing over here. I have them right here standard windshield and this is a national cycle one i used if you can see it right there so let me let's go and take this standard one bring it over here we're going to slap it up next to the Givi if we round it up and it's this right here how the standard one cuts in really uh dramatically now that give give you windshield i have it is usually super tall like way up here so you're constantly looking over the windshield I could not stand it. I didn't like it. So as you can see, I cut it down. I feel like I did a pretty decent job, but I cut it down perfectly because this is in the lowest position now. So now if I ever get on the highway or if it's raining real bad, I pull it up, bam, it blocks everything and we are set. But as in the lowest position, I'm still good for trails and stuff. Really like that windshield. As you see, you can block anything that I mount up there. So with the combination of this windshield with these Puig blockers, which let me swing you over here as well. As you can see, I have the standard Honda ones, the uh, ones you get off Honda's website. And what these do is they clip down there and then they kind of go into these brackets. So they do fit a little bit flusher, actually a lot flusher on the bike. They kind of look natural and they come down here and they'll block it right there. And I think the stock or not stock, but these Honda ones do look better than the Puig ones, but no joke, these Puig ones are so much better as far as what you're getting out of it. And of course, that's what we want, right? We want results, not necessary looks, even though we still want to, you know, our bike to look cool, right? But as you can see, these come up here, kick back, the windshield takes the air, throws it back there. If we come up front, I'm going to give you a view like this, and you can see a little bit better. There you go. Got those kickouts right there, the windshield right here. If you're in seat in position, you can still seat over it, or again, you can cut it more if you need to. I swear by this setup right here blocks the wind for nice highway riding again i've tried swinging you back over national cycle the uh, stock one all sorts of different setups and everything and this is the best combo for wind blockage staying on the subject of wind blockage i also have these honda the lower wind deflectors i believe is what they call them there's just these little rubber deals <laughs> now this is a wind block this is this is my cup holder we'll get to that right there but anyways these are the lower wind blockers and they're okay as you see they fell off once so i had to put some little grips down there do i notice a difference Yes, but it is mild. Like these are incredibly mild of a difference. It just kind of takes it because this actually slots in there and it routes the air out and away. If we come over to the other side without the cup holder, you might be able to see them a little bit better. And again, you can see it just gives it that little flare right there. Again, mild. I figure, you know, it, it's not an expensive mod, so heck, slap it on there if they offer it. Now, keeping on a subject of wind blockage as well here. The hand guards. I have the Bark Busters, which I got the standard ones, the little, the white, and then I got the black flipping over. I want to put on the Storm ones here, which are definitely much bigger. You can kind of see them right there. They kind of cup around, and you see you got lots of hand blockage. If you put your hand right there, it just blocks it a whole bunch. Now, do I notice a big difference of these compared to the other ones? Not really. Me personally, I like the way these look. The other ones kind of look like dirt bike-ish. These are just kind of subtle. I do like the way these look. And I would tell you, in a wet situation, these do block a little bit more. But as far as wind and warmth, eh, I would say mild, if anything. But I do think these look better as well. And uh, by the way, 
quick other thing the bark busters i've tried cheaper ones on this bike but the bark busters fit perfect coming down around and uh, reaching back here so nothing's again dct your emergency brake so it doesn't come out and hit or anything so uh, again even though they're expensive i would recommend you going with the bark buster setup for your africa twin now let's talk about something other than wind blockage here right you guys are like okay dude like come on so let's go on and talk about my lights right here i got installed now these are nothing fancy straight up tractor supply what is this brand uh that traveler or whatever the lights right there metal housing really solid i did have to order this bracket off amazon and then i just wired them up into there i got these little deer whistles on here hopefully they work because i ride at night and it's uh you know cold lots of deer bounce out so hopefully those uh are doing something but the lights I, I love them as you see i got them routed right up here onto my switch now they're wired right in so we can fire them on as you see right there so you got to make sure you always turn them off since they're not routed to the ignition of the bike but i love these lights as you see you got two of them right there i got them kicked out a little bit because the stock headlight on the africa twin is pretty darn good you've got your turn lights right there really good light setup stock but these i got them kicked out just a little bit to the side so it lights up a lot more airy when i'm night. i wish it was dark right now and i take you guys for spin and show you but i love these i believe these lights are like man maybe i honestly think they're under 50 bucks get yourself a wiring harness off amazon it's like 15 bucks you got a really sweet setup and these aren't like blinding so you're not going to blind other drivers you can actually keep them on but still light up your path or your road whatever you're doing i love these i've used these on multiple bikes and i will continue to use these right here again tractor supply now as for my tires i have the midas e07 plus is that right e07 plus if i'm saying it right and not midas maybe mitas i'm not too sure how you say that and as you can see they got this funky pattern there not so much knobby well, it is knobby but as you can see it kind of sways back let's go on back here to the back tire and check that one out and you can see this back tire is actually starting to flatten out a little bit i, I got a little bit of life left in these and i think i am going to use them till the end i was going to swap them out a little bit quicker but we're going to give them a little longer. Now, why I said I wanted to change these tires sooner than later is because when I first installed them, I absolutely hate them. By the way, I do install my own tires. I, I got to make a video of that. I got one of those racks that attach to the back. Anyways, whatever. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video. But as far as this tire here, when I first installed it, I hated it. And no, that's not just because it's a knobby tire. I've ridden many a knobby tires before. But I think the combination of a knobby tire on this big of a bike... Me riding still a lot of road, not just off-road. Again, the combination of it all just was not fun on this bike. The front tire was wobbly. The back tire would skip across. If I was at an intersection kind of turning, I'd feel just a slight skip right there. So again, I think it's a little bit of me where it's just having to build my confidence with the Africa Twin. But again, I never felt that on a knobby-ish tire, you know? And I think it was really just that pattern right there. So... I can't say it's a bad tire. I can't say I love the tire. I don't even know if I'd recommend the tire, but I would say now, after I give it the time it deserves, I do enjoy the tire. It's fantastic off-road. I still have itchy situations or sticky situations while I'm on road sometimes. So, I don't know. It was fun trying them. Now, I don't want to keep harping on these tires here, but I just want to show you. This is my rear tire, and you can see the tread is pretty darn low. I feel like I got one more good road trip in these, and it's done. Now, on the sides, as you can see, it's got some serious grip over there, too. And that's what I love about it, because if you're mud or sand, which we have a lot down here in the south, it grips onto that. Even though you got this slide right here, bam, it comes up and grips right there. But the center, the weight, especially with the luggage, which we're about to talk about, the center definitely wears down pretty darn quickly and i guess at a total i probably have i would say maybe right at 5,000 miles on these so again the back one is wearing pretty good R real quick one other thing the stock tire again is over here which i changed fairly fast right here just because i wanted something better off-road but these are my next tires i have sitting here waiting really excited to try these the dunlop Dunlap, what are these things? I mean, what are the Trail Max Mission? Yeah, Trail Max Mission right there. So really excited to try those tires. All right, so which model are we at next? Do we talk about the crash bars or the cup holder? We, we, we definitely got to go cup holder here, guys, right? Kevin Moto cup holder just grips right onto the crash bars. I love it. It's got a little hole down there, so if you spill anything, and I, I can't keep anything in this when I'm riding or it'll fly out, but whenever you're stopped or if you're on a trail and you're not going too fast on a highway or anything, 
bam, you just put it right there. Really awesome, cheap thing to have. And again, it's, it just sits there, you know what I mean? I stink and love it. But anyways, let's do talk about these crash bars right here. These are the Heed crash bars. As you see, I got the DCT version. It comes out, pokes out right there, attaches in there, right down here, and then up in side there they were tough to install comes up here which you guys saw before it split so it's not that single connection there and then it connects down yonder up underneath again coming to the other side as you can see them come here bam and right down to there now as you're noticing the thing i love about the heat crash bars is even though they're disconnected in the front but they're in there real tight like they do not budge at all but it covers the engine covers the frame up here as you all know i did drop my bike before i had crash bars on it then i put crash bars on it you know of course i did it backwards there right but anyways talking about these crash bars i got the silver ones as well which i think just look good now if i would have bought the black cases in the back which we'll talk about here soon i think the black crash bars which he does make them in black and silver but i knew i was going all silver here so again i really like that combo but if you get black cases I say get the black bars, and I think that'll look pretty sharp. But again, I love these crash bars. I really do. They're on there solid, not a single budge whatsoever. They connect in multiple points. They protect the entire bike. Love them and highly recommend them. I do remember they are quite expensive. So that is one thing about them, but definitely worth it. All right, so now let's go and look at some of these mods midway through the bike. We already talked about our great cup holder, but I do have the tank grips here for uh, from Honda, the actual legit ones from Honda, and, and I highly recommend these guys. They're great when you stand up. You can put your leg in here. It grips. When you're sitting down, you can grip it without them. Uh, again, my legs are sliding all over the place. That is something you need right there, and the best ones I've experienced are the ones directly from Honda. An upgrade you need on your Africa Twin right now. You'll notice the difference instantly, especially if you're doing off-road. You're going to be able to lock your legs in there and really control the bike a bit more. Now, I've got a couple things to show you up on a dash but let's go on and start right here with my tank bag i use this uh what is this called nelson rig right here this nelson rig bag i'll link it down in the description i absolutely love this bag it's great because i just use magnets comes right down here right on the other side as well and then right here above our gas nozzle because you know that the aluminum right there is not going to stick so bam it sticks right down there one thing i hate is tank bags with straps get to a gas station you gotta unstrap it yada yada, yada so on and so forth this one bam take it off and there we go. We are good to go. It's none of them other goofy ones where you got to put that lock on your gas tank. Then you got this gap down here. You got to strap it all the way down there. Ridiculous. This one, I love. Look at that. It's on a solid. It's not going anywhere. I've ridden interstate, off-road, everything, and it's never fallen off once. And I believe this bag is right at 100 bucks or something like that. And, man, I just, I love it. You got all the storage right up here. Put my little solar charger, some stuff in there. You got the side pockets. I've used it in the rain. Again, it is fantastic. I absolutely love it. You even got some straps under there if you want to strap it. But the thing I love about it is you don't need straps. You can just magnetize it. Highly recommend that bag. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about what we have on a dash right here. Well, as you can see, I do have my phone mount. I've used this on multiple bikes. It's a cheap, like $12 or $13 one off Amazon. I love it. It extends out. You can lock it in. You got multiple attachment points. You got the anti-vibration rubber grips in there. It's amazing. You spend, you know, 100 bucks on the quad lock thing. It's like, ah, I don't know. This is really confidence inspiring because it locks it in multiple places. You got the anti-vibration. You can lock it right there, and it's easily adjustable love 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 this i actually put the same one on the rebel as well now looking up at the dash one thing you're not going to be able to notice is i got a screen protector on both of these right here little bubbles on the side it's not the greatest it's one of those little plastic ones it's not one of those tempered glass but it's all i could find and you all know the screens on these honda bikes if you wipe it with like the wrong kind of cloth it's going to put those little tiny surface scratches on it so this is something that, again, it's just a peace of mind. You, you want to protect what you can. And coming up here, I have this little, whatever you call this, a navigation mount, right? Comes down, bam, connects into there. I don't have anything connected to it. I tried connecting my phone, but it blocked a lot of my view on the road, so I didn't like it. So I might get like a tire pressure monitor or something and put it right there. Uh, not, not too sure yet, but right now it's just pretty sure. I really wish you could adjust the windshield like that instead of having to grab on both sides. That would be stinking awesome. Coming back out over to the handles here, 
I do have different mirrors on them. Why I have these different mirrors, nothing's wrong with the stock ones. They're perfectly fine, but I love these because I can just pop it out and I got my bolt that goes in there and I can move the mirror around. You don't got to get those two wrenches and adjust them right over here. I hate it. It's so annoying adjusting motorcycle mirrors. So these are great. They look just like the stock ones, maybe a little cooler because they come out. But again, if you want to just adjust them, bam, it's right there. One little bolt underneath that cap and you're good to go. And again, I think they look pretty good. They look just like the stock ones. Now, I know we already talked about my lights and the control up here. One thing I just want to point out is I used one of those switches where it's like on, off, and then you've got like a different switch. You got like three positions in it. I just want to let you know, with it connected like that, I drained my battery on the Africa Twin. I don't know why it was connected up the same way. It's almost like it was thinking like, hey, you had a third thing connected. I don't know. So I had to get this connection with just a straight up basic one connection on and off mode right there. And it just, it works fine right now. It's nothing fancy or expensive, but it's a, it's a great uh, switch. Now, as far as right here, you're seeing, I got that wind deflector. Everybody with Africa Twin talks about this as far as buffing and so on and so forth. I never noticed much buffing coming up through there and that air coming up through there. What I did notice is dirt coming up through there. Again, your tire's spinning. You can pretty much see right down to the ground and a lot of dirt would come up. This pretty much reduces all of that. So I don't notice any more dirt coming up on me. And I, I really love this thing. I really do. I don't notice much wind blockage again, but the dirt was game changing how much it blocked out of there. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about one of my favorite mods, the seat. The seat concept seat for the Africa Twin. Now, this is the one piece. As you see, it comes up, bam, kicks right there, so you don't got the two pieces anymore. I've had a lot of people in comments whenever I talk about my Africa Twin, people have stated, man, that seat looks uncomfortable. Or, oh man, it just bows out too much right there on the side. Well, believe it or not, what I love about it is how it bows out. Let me show you this way. So the stock one is pretty much like that, and it'll come back right here, right? It's like a dirt bike seat. So if you're a serious or off serious off-roader, yeah, maybe the stock seat will be better for you. But as far as long roads, I mean, it just cups your butt cheeks in there. You're sitting good. Your butt's not hanging off or anything like that. Take some time to break in. Also for passenger, really comfortable for passengers. But the other thing I like is it takes you back and still locks you in there. So, you know, the African Twin's got some juice on, right? So again, if you pull it back, it's still going to lock you in there. You're still going to be in control of your bike. Big wide seat, locks you in. Not crazy up here, really nice. You can still put it in a high and low position. You know, I don't know if I can pop this off. Let's see how easy it pops off. Get my key in here. Oh, you know what? I need two hands. Hold on, guys. Two hand GoPro. All right, let me see. There we go. Okay, look at this thing. This thing is massive. Let me just flip it around and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So as you see, one piece still locks right on about the top. Attach really good, waterproof and all that stuff. I just love this thing being one piece. And as you see, it just fits exactly like the stock one. Now let's go ahead and talk about one of the biggest eye catchers on the Africa Twin, that being my cases. I have the Givi Trekker, I believe they're called, and it's the 47. I totally forget the sizes of them, but I have the bigger back one rather than the small one. I pretty much got the biggest you can get for the Africa Twin, and I love them. So taking a look at my cases here, I first gotta apologize for my mess. I would say, yeah, I just moved in, which, which I did, you all know that, right? But uh, my tent, it's a new tent. I was just testing it out, airing it out, started again, getting bad weather, so I just chunked it in here. So again, part of my mess. Back to our cases here. I really love these things. As you see, I got the extra attachment on the back for Givi. So it mounts down yonder there, comes all the way up, mounts there and scooches it back. The benefit of that, which you don't need to do because you can take this plate and mount it right here on the uh, back rack of the twin. But what this does is pulls it back here and you still have all of that space for a passenger or more importantly for me, a bag. And I can just load it all up right there with extra gear, you know, it's fantastic. Now it is a little bit wobbly on the back. You can see right here, I mean, if you're off road, it definitely bounces around a little bit. It's nothing that's gonna like ruin your ride or anything, but I wish it was on there a little bit firmer, but I think that space comes into play a lot more. 
the other goofy thing about these cases now the bike looks so sideways it's on a kickstand i should have put it on the center stand which i forgot about that mod anyways the cases which weird you see they got the big one over here and the small one over there they do that because again the africa twin exhaust shoots up over here so that case is smaller this one's bigger can look a little goofy to some people i'm so used to it but again it does balance out the weight with the exhaust being on this side having a bigger case over here but again these things are massive bam you pop them open you can fit a whole helmet in this case over here and they're easy they just attach on the side now and then you pull this bam it pops off same with this side this one is a little bit smaller over here but again i can fit my whole tent up in one of these little cases and then we got this big one up here which got so, hey, you got to have that two ply you never know where you're gonna end up you know and then uh, i got my tools um axe little shovel and stuff like that and then of course if i'm ever in a foreign country and i can't speak the language i can point out what i need but anyways i love these cases here side thing on the case is the reflectors guys i again with this bike being so big and it really blocks everything this is some of you may think ah oh, it looks kind of goofy i love them especially with the bigger cases and these are so good they're so bright my buddy introduced me to these and i just again they're, they're, they're fantastic again links down in the description it's just that one little extra safety touch which i really like by the way i got a helping hand here I don't, I don't know why we cover up our license plates i see every other every other uh youtuber do it so i figured heck let me get a helping hand over here and Cover mine up for some reason. I don't know why. I just see everyone else do it. But again, the cases, I think, are some of the best mods you can get for this bike. And also some of the most expensive mods you can get for this bike, especially going Geevy. You're definitely going to be upwards around a thousand bucks plus now two little mods i forgot underneath the bike here again i did put the center stand on right here which i very rarely use i rarely rarely ever use that center stand because i have motorcycle jack and then the back thing which is just easier when you press down on this bike it's just so heavy and it's really very very hard almost impossible for me to do it at least with the uh, cases on so then i gotta pop the cases off and i can just go get my other thing jack it up and i'm done so Again, I figured let me have it on there in case you ever need it. I also have a little kickstand um, extender here, which is something you really need, especially if you're off-road. You got the little bit there. It's just going to sink into the ground. This is just going to grab onto it a little more right here. Um, one thing I'm going to ask you guys, and if you can let me know down in the comments, I have been looking for some good foot pegs that aren't ridiculously expensive i found some and they're like 200 bucks or so these are the stock ones and i just took the rubber out they do plenty fine for me but i would like something a little bit maybe like yay big or something like that so if you got any recommendations please let me know down in the comments now there's actually two mods i forgot about on the front and i want to ask you guys if you can see them because again they just totally slipped by my mind number one being this horn up here now you all heard me talk about this on the royal infield i actually put one on 300 i put it on every single one of my bikes i actually already put one on my new rebel i love this thing it's like 13 bucks off amazon simply plug and play and bolt it in and it could honestly be a lifesaver i love it it is so loud it sounds like a car horn it really but it's not like obnoxious loud it's not like oh what's he got on his bike again it just sounds like a car horn way better than a motorcycle horn you know it's great the one thing i want to tell you you got this mouth up here where it opens up keep it going that way don't keep it up or all the water is going to shoot in it don't keep it down or the mud from your tire is going to shoot up into there so keep it to the side again keeps it nice and clean so it doesn't fail on you right there now talking about mud going into that that's the other mod i got the fender extender right up here which i actually drilled into the stock one and put this on oh man i love this you might be thinking oh well does that cake up with mud you know when you're off-roading well if that's going to cake up then you're going to worry about this caking up up your stock so no there's no issues with it what it does prevent is again that dirt flinging up there where i showed you with that little uh plastic piece up at the top prevents that dirt flinging up there or all that dirt flinging back onto here it, again it's just something that makes such a big difference for such a simplistic mod that most people would look by uh, it's just it's something i highly recommend and that goes into play with that horn right there this blocks a lot of that going up into that horn but more importantly up into your face love this little guy here so there we go that's the mods on my 2022 africa twin adventure sport es whatever the heck it's called dct i have a lot of mods on this but i really feel like the bike is built and it's complete and i absolutely love it built out like this now i would say if you're more of an aggressive off-roader again some of these mods like the cases or maybe the seat may not be for you but if you're like me and you spend a lot of time on the road and you want to ride for a long time hours and hours without even having to stop 
this is fantastic. You got the protection, you got the security, you got the wind blockage, you got the storage. I highly recommend every mod on this bike. Is there anything I would change on it right now? I, I, again, I don't think so. I think I have this bike built complete besides the tires, but are we ever done trying tires? Tires are so fun just to try out and play around with. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope I helped you out. If you're riding an Africa Twin, maybe contemplating it, wondering how to build it out. If you got any other questions, ask right down in the comments. Always glad to talk shop. I absolutely love it. If you want a tip on installation or something like that, or a little more information on it, let me know. Heck, maybe we can make a video on a certain mod here or there if you guys are that interested into it. But uh, again, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope I was able to help you out. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to catch you on the next adventure. Bye now. And much more content to come on this beauty right here. Got her built out quite a bit already. As you see, we're going to have to do a mod video on this one as well. Oh, she is an absolute beauty. More content to come on this as well.